Alright guys, welcome to this video on how to handle complicated math by doing effective rounding skills when you don't have a calculator on the MCAT. So I have popped up an MCAT style question, something that you could encounter on test day, onto the screen. So go ahead and pause this video and try to attempt this question on your own first, and then come back and join me and we will do it together. See you in a sec. Okay, so whenever I approach any of these types of questions where I know I'm going to need to do calculations, my first step is always to write out all the numbers that they give me. And I know that seems a little redundant, but what it will allow you to do is allow you to check your units, check your numbers, see if there's anything missing that you'll need to either look in the passage for or know from your knowledge. Basically just get organized before actually getting into the calculation part. So let's start off by just writing 7.15 grams of Na2CO3, and then they also gave us the molar mass, which is 286.14 grams per mole, right? Because that's our units per molar mass. Now, if I'm given molar mass and I'm given grams, I'm thinking to myself, they're probably going to want me to calculate the moles of this thing, right? So just always looking for what are they likely to test me on. All right, and they also gave us 50.00 milliliters in our solution, right, which is our volume. Okay, and then what are they asking for? They're asking out of this initial 50 milliliter solution of Na2CO3, how many sodium ions are there? Okay, so we're looking for sodium ions. How did we get to sodium ions? Well, we dissolved, right, we ionized the Na2CO3, and whenever you have an ionization reaction, I recommend writing it out because you want to look for the molar ratio. One of the key parts of these types of questions is knowing the molar ratio. Sure enough here, for every one mole of Na2CO3, we get two moles of Na+, right, sodium ion, and then it's CO3, two minus, just for completion. All right, so we're trying to calculate how many of these guys we had, so we know we're going to need our molar ratio. I'm going to put a little star and 2x, because I know I'm going to need to multiply by 2 at the end, whatever I've calculated for the reactant. We'll get there in a sec. Finally, before you get started, glance at the answer choices. I recommend this for math questions so that you can kind of see where you're trying to go and if there's anything you can eliminate off the bat. In this four, these four answer choices, we see really, really, really big exponents, right? 22, 23, and that should get you thinking about which number, especially when we're talking about moles. Avogadro's number. Good. Big, big, big numbers. We're thinking Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules per mole. And in fact, that is one of our answer choices. It's just straight up Avogadro's number. All right, so we're asked for how many molecules of sodium ion there are. In order to know that, we've got to know the moles because we've got to get rid of the moles part of this equation. So we need to get to moles of sodium ions. In order to do that, we need to calculate the moles of the Na2CO3, which we have with our grams and our molar mass. So that's our setup. We're going to get the molar mass and the grams to get us moles. We're going to use the molar ratio to get to moles of sodium ions, and then we're going to use Avogadro's number to get to molecules. All right, so now we have our setup. Let's do it. So go ahead. You can catch up with me if you're working through it, but we're going to talk through it step by step. We're starting with getting to moles from grams and molar mass. Whenever we want to do that, we divide. All right, so if you start with grams and you want moles, divide by the molar mass. If you start with moles and want grams, multiply. Moles multiply. All right, so sure enough, here we have some complicated numbers. Ick, gross, complicated division, especially because we don't have a calculator. So we're going to need to round, but I want you to be very careful about how you round on the MCAT. It's not willy-nilly. One thing to note is if you round down on the numerator, you want to also round the same direction on the denominator. So if I round this 7.15 down to 7, I should also round the denominator down. So initially when I was looking at these numbers, I was like, oh, 7 and 300. But that actually breaks our rule because I'd be rounding the numerator up and the denominator down, which we never want to do. So just round in the same direction. If I rounded 7.15 up to 7.5, I could then round the denominator up because it's going to retain that same value. All right, so just know if you're dividing, round in the same direction. So I want to round down with 286.14, but 
I don't want to round down a lot because 7.15 to 7 is very small change. So I want to make kind of a small change here to this 286.14. So I want to think to myself, when you're trying to round with a fraction like this, can 7 go into and easily divide into a number close to the number I have? And sure enough, I'm like, yeah, 28. I can divide 7 into 28 easily. So let's go ahead and do 280. Now, still complicated, right? Because we have the, the extra zero here, which makes it kind of challenging. So what you can always do is you can always turn this fraction into scientific notation. So here we go, 7 to times 10 to the negative, or 10 to the zero, and then 28 times 10 to the one. Why are we doing this? Because now we have a very easily divisible uh, set of mantissas. Mantissas are the number in front of the exponent, like these are mantissas, right? And so now we can very easily divide the mantissas and you can do that separately from your exponent calculation. So seven goes into 28 four times, so that will be one fourth, right? One fourth. And to turn that into decimals, since that's what we'll be using for our calculation, it's 0.25. All right, now for our exponent, when we divide exponents, we subtract the exponent, right? So 10 to the zero, 10 to the minus one will be 10 to the minus one. Now to make that easier for me, I'm gonna go ahead and just convert this into 25 times 10 to the minus three, right? Move two, make a small number bigger, make a bigger number smaller, right? So if we're changing the decimals to the right, I'm gonna make this a smaller number. All right, so now we have 25 times 10 to the three moles of Na2CO3. All right, so I'm gonna rewrite that uh, over here in our black again, right? So we got 25 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of Na2CO3, our reactant, right? So now we have two options. Both are equally okay to do. Whatever works with your brain better, that's the one to use on test day, okay? So option one, we can do the molar conversion first, all right? So we can go from the moles of Na2CO3 to the moles of sodium ion. The way we do that is we just multiply by the molar ratio, right? Because for every one mole of the reactant, we have two moles of the sodium ion, so we need to double it. So all we can do there, we just multiply the value that we have by two, and we will get the moles of sodium ion. 50 times 10 to the negative three moles of Na plus. And then from there, we just need to utilize our Avogadro's number get to molecules. Since molecules is on the numerator, we just multiply by Avogadro's number, right? The hint there is also that the exponents are really big, so we know we're multiplying. All right, so uh, we multiply six. We don't need the 0.02, right? The numbers are different enough. So six times 10 to the 23 molecules per mole, right? Again, we are multiplying. I know I'm writing it kind of like division, but we're multiplying so we can eliminate the moles and end up with molecules like so. <laughs> All right, we're getting a little cramped, but we are almost done. So 50 times 6, 5 times 6 is 30, add an extra zero, and now we have 10 to the 20, right? Because when we multiply exponents, we just add them together. So 23 plus negative 3 is 20 molecules of Na+. All right, now we'll pause there. I'll tell you how we deal with this at the end. I want to show you the other way we could do this math. The other way is to do Avogadro's number first, right? And so we could first find the molecules of Na2CO3 and then do the molar conversion, all right? Equally valid options. So what we're doing here is just multiplying by six times 10 to the 23, right? So 25 times six, 150. The way I did that is 25 times four is 100, 25 times two is 50, so that gives us 150. And again, the exponent rules are the same, we just add the exponent, so negative three, plus 23, again, gives us 10 to the 20. And then, this is again now molecules of Na2CO3. So now all we have to do is just multiply by our molar ratio, which again gives us the same number as we got on the left, 300 times 10 to the 20. Now you're like, Amanda, I need to do my conversion, my, because our numbers are not in hundreds, right? They're in single digits. But look at the answer choices. 1.5, 3, 6.02, 12. What's the only number it can be? Yeah, B, right? Because it's the only number with a 3 in it, right? So again, 
once you get down to something where you're like, okay, I've got the value that I'm looking for, just check and see if there's an answer that it has to be given the numbers you're provided, right? So again, we can very easily get there um, without having to actually go ahead and convert our exponents uh, into three times 10 to the 22, right? Um, you could always do it to double check at the end. Now notice, A, tempting answer if you didn't do the molar ratio. That will always be an answer, right, is the wrong molar ratio. So just make sure that in your setup step like we did together, notice the molar ratio, write out the reaction if you have to because that will always be a wrong answer is the wrong molar ratio, one to one instead of a one to two or vice versa. C is kind of a distortion, right, where it's like, oh, well, I must need molecules, I'll just pick Avogadro's number, right? In this case, we didn't need to calculate the exact number. Um, and then D comes from an overcalculation, right? Overcalculation, too much. All right, so again, there are three things that I want you to notice here as we went through this. Number one, we were really careful to write out all the numbers that we needed and know exactly how we we're gonna approach the math before we got there. So a lot of the work in these math questions is the setup, not the execution. Number two, be very careful and cautious with your rounding. Do it properly in the sense of trying to keep the numbers as close to original as you can and look at your answer choices to know how liberal you can be with your rounding. And then finally, know that there are multiple ways to get to the answer. Try to get to a place where you're confident in how you're approaching it and your path. Both of these were valid options. It's not that one is better than the other. All right, so I hope that was helpful for you. If you do want to see more videos like this of me working through math questions or other tricky types of questions on the MCAT, uh, please go ahead and put the questions in the comments. I'm always happy to make videos on these topics. And go ahead and like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys so much.